What's up everybody? This is MMA Rant. I'm coming to y'all today with another video. This video is about Joe Rogan explaining how he feels like Conor McGregor in order for him to win the next fight against Nate Diaz, the rematch at UFC 200. He needs to highly, highly work on his jujitsu. And Joe Rogan said, hey, you know, Conor, you know, he does good in all the other areas, you know, but, you know, in order to surpass or beat Nate Diaz, he needs to work on that jujitsu, you know, because, hey, true, he was beating Nate Diaz on the feet in the boxing, but when the fight went to the ground, you know, basically, he had no answer for it. So, you know, like he said, hey, you know, Nate Diaz went through Conor McGregor like hot grease being poured into a plastic bag. So, you know, Joe Rogan had a point, you know, with that, you know, that he needed to work on that jujitsu and highly work on it in order to beat Nate Diaz at UFC 200, you know? He said, hey, Nate Diaz fought this dude on 11 days notice, really wasn't training. Imagine what would happen at UFC 200 once Nate Diaz gets a full training camp, you know? Conor had a full training camp when he fought Nate Diaz, but Nate Diaz didn't have a full training camp, you know? So Nate Diaz wasn't even working on any jiu-jitsu or anything else like that. Like Nate Diaz said, hey, when he got the call, he was he was hanging out at the beaches at Cabo, probably drinking, eating, and doing everything else he needed to do. You know, he claimed he got sick, so, you know, I know he wasn't sick the whole time, you know. But anyway, you know, uh, Carl McGregor, he, he definitely needs to work on his jiu-jitsu in order to win that fight, you know. But Joe Rogan said on his podcast, hey, you know, basically, you know, if Carl wants to have a chance, he's got to definitely work on that. So, I agree with that, ain't got no problem with that, you know. You know, uh, what's his name? The, uh, uh, Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo told them, hey, I'll work with Connor on his jujitsu now, you know. So, Eddie Bravo throwing his hand out there to help out the man, you know. But like Connor says, he doesn't believe in training outside of his uh, camp, you know. He doesn't believe in going to other camps, uh, training with other people, and learning. I think that's a major crutch, you know. Because I feel like this, hey, you know. If you want to get better at what you're doing, you need to be open to criticism. You need to be open to learning new things. I mean, hey, Connor brought in Idol Portal, a movement instructor, to help him with his fights. So he brought in somebody new to his camp. And to me, movement, you know, movement instructor uh, doesn't have a whole lot to do with helping you uh, fight or compete against people with other, you know, fighting techniques, you know. Basically, you know, I can say that Conor's last fight, you know, at UFC 196, when he was fighting Nate Diaz, he was winning that fight. You know, he got caught, he got stunned, he got hurt, and he got hurt for a while while he was on his feet, but he was fighting back with all he had, you know? So Conor was hurt on his feet for about a minute before he finally went for that takedown. So once he went for that takedown, he was definitely hurt. He was definitely seeing stars. He was definitely seeing the future you know, of his demise. So when he went for that takedown, you know, he actually uh, completed the takedown. When he took Nate Diaz down, he actually completed the takedown. He actually went to mounds, but Nate Diaz had him in, around his neck. You know, Connor basically, you know, had no energy. He had a bigger man on top of him. He was already hurt, stunned, and dazed. And like I said, Nate Diaz was much bigger than him. You know, Connor weighed in, barely meeting the, um, the weight class requirements, you know, he got choked, you know, he had no more energy left to basically fight the choke, I mean, Nate Diaz had a thing ripped down on him, you know, like, like he was going to die if he didn't complete this finish, you know, and Connor had no choice but to tap out from it, you know, so, you know, what, he, he Connor, you could tell he was hurt, you could tell he was hurt, he barely even had enough energy to tap, so, you know, it was either go the hell out or we use your last bit of energy to tap out, you know, or then he had to step in and save that man. You know, he he would have died that night. So, you know, he had to step in. He had to help him. Connor was winning that damn fight. You know, I do agree. But guess what? When he fought uh, Nate Diaz. Nate, I mean, not Nate Diaz. When he fought Chad Mendez. Chad Mendez was winning that fight. But Connor came back and won that fight. So it, it doesn't really matter about, hey, I was winning the fight. But then, you know, I want that one back. Chad Mendez is saying the same thing. You know, Chad Mendes was winning that fight, you know, and he lost at the end. Connor was much better on the feet. 
with his boxing than Chad Mendez was. Chad Mendez was beating the whole fight with his wrestling. That was Chad Mendez's bread and butter. But when it got on the feet, Conor McGregor, a better boxer, beat him. You know, so the same thing with Nick Diaz fighting. Conor was basically beating him in his boxing. You know, even though Nick Diaz is a great boxer, it was very competitive um, standing. But when it went to the ground, Nate Diaz is a way better um, jiu-jitsu fighter. You know, so when it went to the ground, Nate Diaz beat him on the ground. You know, just that plain and simple, you know? So, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I just don't agree with, you know, Connor with that sense that, hey, I was beating him the first round, uh, half of the second round, then I lost. I need to get that one back. So, you know, hey, if you feel that way, you need to let Chad Mendes get his fight back. But hey, in this picture here, you know, Conor McGregor is um, wearing his purple belt, you know? Now, uh, let me do a little bit of explaining about these degrees of these jujitsu belts. You know, I'm gonna go down the order of the colors. You know, you got your white, you go yellow, you go orange, you go green, you go blue, you go purple, which he got on here. And as of right now, Conor McGregor is currently a brown belt. But you got brown, you got red, and then you have black belt. Conor McGregor is a brown belt. His jiu-jitsu instructor is John Kavanaugh, you know? Now, I agree, hey, you need to step out and you need to, uh, you know, venture out and do things to get better with your jiu-jitsu. It's almost like, hey, John Kavanaugh has the patent, and I'm, I'm just using this as, as an example. John Kavanaugh has the blueprint to the invention of the light bulb, okay? He knows how to create the light bulb, he knows how to make the light bulb work, great but nowadays in the present time there's fluorescent bulbs there's natural light bulbs there's uh neon lights you know and strobe lights and things like that and that's you know that's the other type of levels of jujitsu in, in training that he can get from other people you know now john Cameron is a black belt so you know he's, he's getting legit training nate diaz is a first degree black belt under caesar gracie so, you know, those are the levels of the black belts. And, and who has the advantage, you know? Um, Conor McGregor's team. You know, if I'm not mistaken, you know, um, Artem, Artem, whatever the hell his last name, lost his first fight from that uh, tough finale to a jiu-jitsu um, fighter. Somebody that was highly skilled in jiu-jitsu. Artem lost that fight. Gunnar, uh, Gunnar Nelson lost his fight to Damian Maya, which was another experience a um, master jiu-jitsu player. And then Conor McGregor lost to Nate Diaz, who, which is, like I just said, a first-degree black belt. And, and you don't stop at black belt. You keep going up. You keep learning and things like that. So Nate Diaz isn't fully, fully experienced, but he is a first-degree black belt, which is definitely higher than um, the brown belt. You know, so that team needs to definitely revamp and reorganize the way that they're training their jiu-jitsu and may need to bring in some other people. You know, that's what they need to do in order to uh, propel. And it usually takes 12 to 18 months, I believe, to go up a color in your black belts. So from now to UFC 200, for uh, Connor to go from brown to black, it's going to take a lot longer than uh, a few months. It's going to take a couple of years. So does Connor have a chance in this fight? Yeah, he was winning in the last fight, you know, and I think he could possibly come back. And win this next fight. I think he has enough jujitsu if he has the energy and the, and the uh, mental status to get through some um, holes, he'll be okay, you know. But hey, Joe Rogan made a point. He does need to work on his jujitsu. Connor does have a chance in this next fight to win this fight. So he better hit the gym right now and start working on that, that jujitsu. Hey, everybody, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Uh, subscribe, hit that thumbs up icon. I appreciate your time listening. Until next time, stay true to the game. And guess what? See y'all in the next video.